Hey guys, it's Holly here for PlayStation Access, and I've caught up with one of my favorite men in the industry, and we've been meaning to catch up for ages. It is, of course, Charles Cecil from Resolution, and we are talking Broken Sword. We are, we are. In fact, the last time we met, we talked Broken Sword on the Vita. On Vita, but now... But now we're talking about PlayStation 4. It's so exciting. Which is amazing. So to bring it to PlayStation 4, what happened? Where did that conversation come for? Because I know the Broken Sword 5, Serpent's Curse, was a Kickstarter project for you guys. It, it was a Kickstarter project, and... The, the conversation really came because we, we've always had a great relationship with Sony. Or Good. I hope we have. I don't know I if you would agree with that. I would. It's and, the, and your home course, is with us. The, the home is with you. And the first uh, the first Broken Sword came out, the first two Broken Swords yeah. came out on the original PlayStation. Yeah. And then Broken Sword 3 came out on the PlayStation 2. Yeah. So it's great to sort of renew that relationship. And one of the things I'm really proud of is that while all the um, all the publishers were saying Adventures Dead or Adventures Dead, no. the official PlayStation magazine, which at that point had a circulation of six hundred thousand, <laughs> that's changed a little bit. It has changed a little. Um, the the readers voted Broken Sword Four, I think, the fifth best PlayStation game ever. See, it's amazing. Um, sorry, Broken Sword Two and Broken Sword One in in, in the top ten or eleven, and and we were beating uh, Resident Evil and extraordinary yeah. massive massive titles. And that was incredibly flattering because it was showing that, well, it's very easy to uh, to archetype a uh, PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's really, really broad, and and yeah. people people love lots of different types of games. And one of the things about the original Broken Sword was that the obviously the controller was digital; it didn't have that wonderful analog pad. Yeah. And we've had such fun with with the uh, with, with the, the dual shock because we, we use the touch, touch pad. we use the touch pad we can move the screen with the right thumbstick um, oh. you, when you make phone calls you listen to the controller so you and, and and the voice comes through and it's so, it's, just, it's such fun it was such fun to just say what can we do we've got all these really That's cool incredible. features what are we going to do and the That's and the game of course I mean to be, yep. If I can just say that on on it's, it's out on PC and we're getting ninety plus percent. Um, Amazing. So everybody's giving us great reviews and we've had so much wonderful, wonderful feedback from PlayStation yes. people and they're saying when's it going to come? When's it come? And finally we could announce it because I kind of had to keep it secret. But if there's one thing that you must never tell me, it's a secret because I can't keep them. <laughs> You'll keep your own. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't keep anybody's secrets. I'm rubbish. I'm absolutely rubbish. Well, you managed to keep this a secret because when I got the news through, it was fantastic. I mean, I played it on the Vita and I absolutely loved it. But, I mean, we put a picture of uh, Nika's apartment up on Facebook. And the amount of PlayStation fans are like, I know where that is. I recognize that artwork. And that was so many years after we'd seen a broken sword on PlayStation. And people still had such fond memories. Yeah. No, we're very lucky because with... With the Kickstarter, I didn't... Well, I wrote my first game for the Sinclair ZX81 in 1981, OK? Now, I was very young. I was very young. <laughs> yeah. I'd only just left school. But that was a long time ago. But what I remembered from that with great fondness was the ability to meet people at what we used to call microfairs. And, um, and these were people that would talk to you because this was a new medium. It was, yeah. and, and they'd tell you what they liked and what they didn't like. And then we lost that. So when I founded Revolution in 1990... We, we had publishers and retailers, and we, we had no direct contact at all, except sort of indirectly through the press. Yeah. And then when we were able to self-publish again, suddenly we had the ability to communicate directly. Amazing. And what a wonderful collection of people. So initially we, 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 we published our, our games on, on, on various formats, and then Kickstarter came along, and there was this sort of tsunami of goodwill. But it was from nice two sides. See. People who remember it first time. Yeah. And you have some and, incredibly and then, loyal fans. Oh, God, they are. And they're fantastic. Well, there was one young woman that we, we, we interviewed um, because we've finished now, and, and, and she said, I waited up all night, and I had one or two hours sleep, and I just waited compulsively watching you know, the oh. money come in because I so wanted the project yeah. to go ahead. And, and um, you're like, me too. And then another, an, another young woman... Um, who created something called the Order of the Goat. Yeah, oh, now this is, uh, if for, for Broken Sword fans, the goat is very important. It is, it is, yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of knew I made it when I, I was in a taxi, um, and uh, the way taxi drivers always turn around and they say, what do you do, mate? Yeah. Go, you really don't want to start a conversation. Right? And, and the best way is to say, I write video games. Okay. Any what I would have heard of, he said, I went, probably <laughs> not. Not, not, you're probably a Call of Duty man. Yeah, you know, and that's let's fair just be enough. honest yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He went, go on, go on. And um, so I said, broken sword. And he looked around and he said, are you the... Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> yeah, carry no. on. He said, are you the bastard that wrote the goat puzzle? <gasps> and I thought, 
I've made it. I made it. When taxi drivers are talking to me and about my the goat, goat puzzle. puzle. Exactly, and hate me because of my goat puzzle. Anyway, the point is that this one of group fans collect, uh, created something called the Order of the Goat. And Sarah was the princess of the Order of the Goat. I and love it, that. And the whole thing, the whole thing took on its own life. And it was quite clear that what people wanted was to feel part of development, yeah. which, which they were. Because they we, really were we, now. We asked their opinion. When, the, when the, 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 the video came out promoting the game, um, George's jaw was a bit strange and people came back to us and commented on it. Mm. And they were right, so we changed it. And from our perspective, it was wonderful. We had all these people giving us their thoughts. From their perspective, they were delighted because we were actually listening and they were having an impact. So it really was a win-win yeah. scenario. And what I'm pleased about is that we kind of brought people through and now there's a lot of goodwill. We finished the game, we've delivered it, it's getting great reviews, it's what people wanted, yeah. it's what we promised, we've got the we, we, we had a few hiccups along the way. But broadly, we tried wherever possible to overcompensate, to overdeliver. And broadly we were successful. And a lot of people are coming and saying that it's the best Kickstarter they've ever done. A lot of people say, oh, so some nice people say this is one of the yeah. greatest experiences okay. that they've ever had because they've made so many friends. It's incredibly flattering. It's a huge privilege to write a game that has this level of passion. So what does it mean now for Revolution? I mean, as the studio, is this, has it put you back on track? I mean, are you guys looking for your next game? Are you feeling confident and ready? Yeah, yeah no, no, it's given us huge confidence because in the, from about 2000, it was actually very, very tough as an independent developer yeah. because of the, the way that we went through publishers and, and, and retailers. So the ability to self-publish um, is great, except that you then have to be able to fund the game, which is why Kickstarter yeah. is so important. And you also have to be able to market it, yeah. which is why being able to talk to wonderful people like you as a small developer is also fantastic. And, and Sony have really leveled the playing field by actively encouraging That's independent nice developers to, to come, which is brilliant. It, it yeah. really makes all the difference. Because if, if Sony didn't do that, then it would kind of would, would have been all the big companies and all the big titles. Yeah. So we're in a great position to go forward. Um, I would love to do a new Broken Sword game. At the meantime, in the meantime, I'm actually experimenting with a different type of adventure, which may Ooh. or may not come off. Which may or may not come off. It's very interesting. But we're in this wonderful position that we don't have the pressure of, you know, loads of staff and big overheads. So we yeah. have the freedom to do whatever we want. And for the time being, I'm enjoying being able to, you know, work on Broken Sword Five, finish it off, bring it to PlayStation Four, of course, and and um, and. And, and work with wonderful people and, and still communicate with our wonderful community and fans. It's great. So when it comes out on PS4, so when it came out on Vita, it came in part one, part two, and then with the season pass for both. Is it coming out all in one go on it's PlayStation 4? It's coming all in one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, PlayStation 4 fans just buy it and enjoy the Absolutely. whole story in Absolutely. one go, which Absolutely. is great. And one of the things, I know it's not an enormously exciting feature, but we've because we've got plenty of space, we've put all the languages on. So we found a lot oh, of people nice. loved playing, say, say German people in particular love to listen to the English voices but oh, if their so English nice. isn't very good then they, they, they'd like German text so we have I mean we, we have fully translated into English French German Spanish Italian and they've also got Russian and Polish text which is so, great for the, so we allow the people to go in and and mix and match see, which is great it does make a difference and can I answer a question that you haven't asked yet go for it and that is what features has the PlayStation 4 so, got? What features has the PlayStation 4 got? That the others don't. <laughs> and, and the answer, thank you for asking that, Holly. You are wonderful. The, the, the answer is, what was great was to be able to go back and actually look at things that were weak. And so we've added quite a lot of animation, particularly in the first few screens. Oh, nice. Birds flying across, people walking across. Um, also, any, any screens that we felt could do with a bit more music, more sound effects. So we've really been able to polish it in a way. There were a few niggly bugs. I mean, it wasn't bugged badly, but there were a few niggly bugs. Mm. And, and my team were absolutely determined. Like, this is it, we're going to When the PlayStation this. came out, you know, this was, it was like a personal vendetta against these bugs. And um, I have, I'm very lucky, I have a very, very experienced team. And some of these people have been, you know, came to Revolution 20 years ago. Wow. Um, and, or, or, well, certainly 15 years ago. And then when we ran into quite tough times, we, we, we changed the model and they went off. Yeah. And now they've come back again. It's wonderful. They're, they're like friends. Um, so the game is actually substantially polished and, and enhanced, but, but the puzzles are the same and yeah. I mean, basically it's the same game. But people who have actually tested it have, have loved it. So I, I hope that, um, I hope our wonderful Broken Sword fans will enjoy the game in the way that 
you know, our, our testers have. I'm sure they will. Now, to finish off, we've got some of these lovely comic books. I'm going to have you sign them on camera, and then we're going to end up giving them away on, on our Twitter account. Fantastic. Accounts. Can I do a little bit of a plug for these? Because yes, you can. These, these were drawn by the hugely talented Dave Gibbons. They're amazing. And Dave Gibbons was the comic book artist behind Watchmen. Oh, wow. So, so I mean, this is really... He is, he is one of the premier, if not the premier comic book artist in the world. You know that he is the comic book laureate. Did, Did you know such know a that? thing existed? It was invented for him for about him. a year ago. That's amazing. So he is, he's, he's the official comic book laureate. So we're going to have three of them to give away and they're all going to be signed as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you go. Right. Well, I sign out. You're going to sign them on camera for me while I do my... Fantastic. My, my, Ollie, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, there you go. That was a wonderful catch-up with one of my favourite men in the industry. Of course, Broken Sword is coming out soon, and you guys can stay tuned to the YouTube channel for even more news.